Hello, good people. Good morning or good evening or good night, whatever it is. There are people here from all over the world. I think this is a more international gathering than it would have been if it took place in New York in person. So it's a great privilege and honor to be here and to present to you. Some of you, I mean many of you, are my LinkedIn contacts. So some of you may know my mission or what I'm doing for the past year or so. I'm preaching a, a religion called collaboration. You know, the sorry state of our uh, industry of conversational AI is not a secret. Let me show you some very, very poor examples of what the state of the art of today in bot technology is. Let's see the first example. Okay. This is a really popular bot. I asked it, uh, can, you, can we play any games? And he said, I need a bit more information, please. So I specified I want to play a game. And of course, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. If we go to the next example, I asked the same bot, how are you? And then tell me about yourself. Could you please rephrase your question in another way? Tell me about you. And then it says, are you looking for this? Are you looking for that? Who made you? So I was created by Nuance. It wasn't, by the way, it's not a Nuance bot. It was just put there by the NLP system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we can give you more and more examples of different kinds of technologies and platforms that this day, this was taken a few days ago, really, really poor performance. The bot doesn't know its own name. The bot doesn't know the color of the sky. The bot doesn't understand that the user wants to talk to it. Ridiculous stuff. So there's no question that conversational AI is in a poor state. And this is in contrast with the field of digital assistance, which is flourishing. It's very easy to get answers to questions from digital assistants, uh, to hold very short exchanges, like one or two turns, but no real conversation is really going on. And the reason for this poor state is, of course, fragmentation. Can we have this next slide? This is just some few names I collected for this presentation to demonstrate how crowded and how fragmented the area of conversational AI is. There's an endless number of platforms, some more popular, some less popular. There's not a single technology here that is close to having 10% of the market. There are literally hundreds of different ways to develop chatbots. And therefore, it's not a surprise that nothing is really happening. There is no code reuse, there is no collaboration, everybody is developing everything from scratch. So in order to demonstrate this sorry state of affairs, I took a, a contemporary example, so to speak, and uh, to demonstrate my point, I took a bot which has been online for a long time now called Anna. Anna is a companionship bot. Hi, Akin. Hello, Jason. How are you? Jason is Anna's caretaker. He is the father of Anna, so to speak. He's been running her on different platforms. You can see Anna's face here on Facebook. Uh, Anna had some previous uh, incarnations. And the next one here, you can see Anna in uh, real flesh and blood. She, here she makes an appearance at the Berlin Chatbot Summit conference. We put uh, Anna's soul into this pepper robot. And uh, for the sake of this particular speech, we gave Anna a different face. Uh, and this is the face that uh, I gave. I'll, I'm going to use a, a push to talk phone in order to communicate with her so she doesn't confuse what I'm saying to you with what I'm saying to her. So I would say, hello, Anna. Hi, Yaki. What's up? Have you heard about the coronavirus? No, I haven't. Can you tell me about it? Well, 
This happened, this actually happened a couple of months ago. A user was talking to Anna, Anna has many followers, and he asked her about the then new coronavirus. Anna didn't know anything. What Anna says when she's confronted with a question of a term she doesn't recognize, she asks the user to explain or to define the term. So as you know, as you see here, uh, Anna doesn't know anything about the coronavirus. As it happens, since the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus broke out, about 200 or 250 different chatbots were developed. If you can, uh, while I'm, I'm speaking, if you can find the Google search, just find the Google search on uh, um, uh, Corona chatbot. Just make a Google search for Corona chatbot and you will see <laughs> amazing number of people, each putting on his own effort in producing a bot that will address the issue of coronavirus. I found that half of them try to diagnose you, half of them try to give you answers to frequently asked questions, FAQ bots, hundreds of different bots. So, to make my point, what I th we are going to do now is we're going to take one of these simple Corona bots and componentize it, make it into a component so Anna could reach this component without having to write special content for Anna to be able to answer Corona-related questions. So, we made a component. The component is called COVID-19. And I'm going to ask Jason now to perform a trick which recently he does uh, very often. And this is to add, you don't have to show yourself, it's okay, you just yeah. But I want to show myself. Okay. What can I do? What can I do? Put it for Anna. COVID-19. What you do is you take the COVID-19 component and you hook it up to Anna. When Anna gets an intent or a question related to either to Corona or to COVID-19, what you need to do is you need to activate this particular component. Then when it's done, it will signal that it's done and Anna will continue her flow. Okay, it's I'll going to that. take, it's going to take Jason maybe Three minutes, four Three minutes. minutes. You gonna play the piano while I'm <laughs> play for the No, I'll 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 speak. <laughs> so the point is this. You develop the COVID nineteen uh, chatbot once, okay? And you give access to this component to every other bot makers out there. And if it's good enough, there's no need for anyone else to develop this special content for this special case. If there was a good source that provides good information, good conversation about this subject, there's no reason not to use it. Why redevelop the wheel again and again and again? So what Jason is doing, he's taking a simple chat, he took a simple chatbot, a Corona chatbot, converted it into a component form, which is really very easy to do, and now he's going to hook up this component to Anna. Now, after this talk is over, you're all invited. If you have, if you run a bot or many bots, okay. you're invited. Okay, I got it. I'm done. No, no shit. Yeah, it's, I worked hard on it. <laughs> it's ready to go, yeah. Whenever you're ready to go, she's got the component. But I didn't explain. Let me finish my explanation first. Okay. So it works like this. Uh, you develop it once, you post it somewhere. In our case, it's our Coco conversational component marketplace or Coco Hub, and you get a good conversation about, uh, about the subject in, in, at hand. So in this case, it's the corona, corona component, and what Jason did, he hooked up Anna to the Corona component. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to restart my conversation with Anna, only this time it's going to be a little more knowledgeable than before. Uh, so... Hey, Anna. Hello again, Yaki. Can you tell me about the coronavirus? Coronavirus disease, COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by a new virus. I hope you are feeling well now. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. The CDC classifies shortness of breath or chest pains as a cause for immediate medical attention. Do you have any persistent pain or pressure in the chest? No, no, I feel well, thank you. I'm happy to hear it. 
Any other questions about the pandemic? Is there a vaccine? To date, there is no vaccine and no specific antiviral medicine to prevent or treat COVID-2019. How many people died already? The numbers change every day. You can follow the statistics here, www.worlddometers.info slash coronavirus slash. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Yaki. Always trying to do my best. Good job, Jason. So, as you can see, it was really a short demo. Uh, you could, you can, after this talk is over, of course, go to the marketplace and test this component. All you need to do is ask for the coronavirus component and speak to it. Or you can integrate this very component into your own bot in case it doesn't know about the coronavirus yet. So uh, the point is clear. Why reinvent the wheel if you can use code developed by others? So what I suggest you do is you go to cocohub.ai, register, test the component, and try to integrate it into your bot. Anything else you'd like to add? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's great, great talk, by the way. It's going really well, I think. Really? Yeah, I think it's going really so. well. I hope so. It's my first time. Yeah, how did the thing with Anna go? Did it go well? It went well, yes. I didn't really, I, I should have asked her exactly how many people died or were infected because she's hooked up to the World Meter API so she can issue a query, ask for the updated number, and give it to us. I should have done that. But it was nice. It was a conversation and Q&A. So it wasn't just FAQs. It was, there was a bit of conversation there, and then there was also... Yeah, like I said, there are, there, there are really two types of, component, of, uh, of coronabots out there, the, the diagnosers and the FAQs. And they're different. One is conversational, and one is more uh, one-liner sort of interaction. Did you mention anything about the meetups that we have every month? Because uh, you said you mentioned that. No, I haven't mentioned it. Uh, we maybe? have a meetup. I'm gonna, every month we have a meetup uh, in May. We have a meetup with special guests. We talk about conversation design, chat about development. We introduce new components. We talk about issues that we're having as designers. It's a lot of fun. It's virtual. So the, the uh, link is on the uh, thing now, the Discord link. Just to wrap things up, Okay, I'm going to head out because I, I, I got to go. You have another one, another, another presentation. Another presentation. Okay. So, thank you. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> um, just to wrap things up, it would have been made more sense if one of the big players put up a, a marketplace or a hub like this and offering all the different platforms a way to communicate and reuse code. The problem is that all the big players have a platform and they compete in this market. So I can understand why these big players, and I, you, know, you all know who the big players are, uh, why they are not uh, leading an initiative to do something which is really, ne really needed, which is the ability to collaborate and, and exchange and reuse code. And if any of the big players did it, I'm sure it would have succeeded at the price of giving up their own platform. But this is a small price to pay. And since no one has really uh, risen to the challenge, and, and it's been a long time now, and it's still no way to exchange and reuse code, uh, we've decided to do it. So you go to cocohub.ai, check out the components, check out the coronavirus component, and make better chatbots. Thank you very much.